So this video is going to show you how to take a brand new empty project in Unity and incorporate the first person exploration kit. So the first thing I did was import the asset and you can see here I have my first person exploration kit uh, folder and I also created a new scene called getting started and put in uh, a plane, a 5x5x5 five by five by five plane for the player to walk around on and I kept the directional light from the default scene. One very important thing to note is that if you choose not to import the project settings when you download the asset from the asset store, you'll get some error messages at various points through this tutorial video complaining about physics layers not being defined and gamepad inputs not being defined. So please refer to the documentation under the custom layers section. There's five layers here as well as some physics interactions that you need to define. And there's also a visual reference for how to set up the different uh, gamepad inputs that are required for the game. The recommended alternative is to say yes when asked if you'd like to import the project settings and then all these things will just work. So the first thing you want to add to the scene from the prefabs folder is the FBE player controller prefab. Um, and I recommend putting that at 0, 1.50 as a good starting place. Um, if you're on the scene you can see we can walk around and look around but we have these um, debug meshes present and those are just where our various things like um, tossing an object, inspecting an object, and holding an object are but those will be disabled in just a minute. So the next three things you want to add are the FP Interaction Manager, the FPE UI Camera, and the FP Event System. So the Interaction Manager handles all the interactions with the various interactable object types. Um, the U UI Camera and the Event System handle things like when we open a journal page, we want to click the buttons to flip back and forth between journal pages and the click the X to close the journal. So the next thing you want to do is inside your FP Interaction Manager prefab, you want to click on the Render Camera and select the FPE UI camera. Now when we run the scene, we can walk around and we have our reticle and our little zoom in mouse hint, and those debug uh, meshes are now gone. So a couple quick changes. I added a material to the floor just to make it easier to see, and added this little cube and named it table, and we use that to set our objects on. Next we're going to add a demo object, so um, let's grab the demo soup prefab and just put that on the table. And you want to line that up so that the bottom of the soup can is just sort of above the, the table surface. Um, and also, since we're going to automatically generate um, a putback object, you can see the inspector this is checked. So the orientation and location for the soup can, that's also going to act as the location where the soup can will be put back. So if we run the scene with the soup um, in the scene, and we put a reticle over top, it says a can of tasty soup, and we can pick that soup up um, Press shift or right mouse to look at it, and then we can put it back on the table. Depending on the version of Unity that you're using, um, some of the later versions of Unity 5 have this problem. Um, you can see when I highlight the soup can, there's a little bit of Z fighting on top of the soup can lid. Now that's because the soup can um, currently uses a cutout texture, uh, a legacy cutout texture. In order to solve this problem, just change the soup can lid uh, materials here to the standard fade texture. And then when you rerun the scene, uh, that Z-Fighting is gone. We want to create a very basic custom object that we can pick up. Um, we just add a 3D object, let's say a cube, um, scale that down a little bit, and put it on the table. And then we're going to apply, uh, let's say, this crumpled texture to it. And then select the cube and add a script. And we want to add the pickup type. So FP interactable pickup script. And then we want the object to highlight when we mouse over it. We want to say uh, grab the cube, put the cube back. Um, and we also want to auto generate a, a putback location and keep the sounds enabled. So let's run the scene, walk up to the cube. It says grab the cube. We can grab it and look at it and we can put it back. If you want to create an alternative putback location for the cube that we just made, make another cube, make it about the same size, um, and put it somewhere else. You want to say you want to rotate it and put it on the corner of the table, and then also apply the putback material just so it's a little easier to deal with. Um, so that will be the new putback location um, for this cube. So to associate this new putback location with the cube, there are two things you need to do. Um, in the in the putback object, you need to assign the FBE putback script and associate the cube by dragging it to my pickup object uh, field in the script. And then in the original cube, just uncheck this auto generate putback location checkbox. And then when you run the scene, you can still pick up the cube, but you'll notice the old putback location isn't there, but instead this one in the corner of the table that's rotated is there. And when we put it back, it goes uh, where the putback location was placed. 
So that completes the basic setup demonstration for the first person exploration kit. If you'd like to see other examples of the various other types of interactable objects like Activate, um, journals, and so forth, please refer to the demo scene that comes with the package. There's also a detailed setup and customization guide that comes with the package, so please refer to that for the details on what each of the inspector variables means for the various object types. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at support at wildfun.com.